Hey guys, this is Mr. Schrader, and we're gonna go over the free body equation practice. We're gonna do a couple examples from here, and then I'll do a couple examples from multiple forces practice part two. Okay, all of this stuff is fair game and likely to be on both the quiz and the test that we're gonna take later on over the same topic. Okay, so for this practice, all this is saying is, hey, you're given a free body diagram. Let's write an equation solving for the variable listed here. So when we look at this, what we should recognize is this force, FA, is larger than FD. So when we write our equation, it's always big minus small. Our positive direction is where the net force is going. So A is bigger, so that's going to be our positive, FA. FD goes in the opposite direction, so we subtract it, and we set that equal to M times A. If I want to solve it for FD, I need to isolate and get this variable by itself. I like to add it to the other side. So I'm going to add FD here and cancel it here. Last step for me would be to, well, let's subtract MA over. So I get FA minus M times A is equal to FD. And from there, if you had numbers, you could solve that problem mathematically. Okay. We're going to solve this one for FFK. Looking at this diagram, the net force, so the overall force, should be to the left. Because FD, FFK, and T all have about the same amount of force. But there's two on this side versus one here. So it's very clearly this is the way it will accelerate. So we make that leftwards direction positive force. So we say FFK is positive plus FD is positive minus t is in the negative direction is equal to m times a. Okay. From here, if I want to get FFK by itself, I need to add t over, and I need to subtract FD over, and that should be my entire equation. FFK is equal to ma plus t minus FD. to solve for FA1. Now this net force is more to the right than to the left, so FA is positive. We will subtract the other two, which is FA2 and FD. I'm going to add these two to this side. FA1 equals MA plus FA2 plus FD. And that's all there is to it. Um, this one, a little bit trickier. We want to solve for M here, and M is not one of the forces. We can see, though, that our net force is going up. So we're going to say force of thrust is positive, minus FG minus FD equals M times A. Now, what you have to remember is that FG is equal to m times g. So anytime we want to solve for m, if there's a fg in the equation, we've got to sub this in. So this has to go in here. So that's going to change it to fth minus m times g minus fd equals ma. Okay. I need to get all the m's on the same side, so I'm going to add this over. fth minus fd equals MA plus MG. Now to get MA or the M's by themselves, each of these terms has an M in it. So we do what's called combining like terms. I need to factor out an M. So this right here is the same thing as M times, well if I divide by M I'm left with A plus and here MG divided by M gives us G. So I've now factored it out. So we can kind of pretend that middle step's not there. This side is equal to this side. I want M, so I the last step is to divide by A plus G. So you get F thrust minus that over A plus G. Set it equal, and we are left with M. That's probably the hardest problem on here. Uh, the other two pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and get on to multiple forces practice problem part two. Okay. So what's new here versus part one is we're still using A, 
But in order to get A, what you see here is we get 0 meters per second, 2.5 meters per second, 0.5 seconds. We have to go back to kinematics. In kinematics, we did our five equi or five variables, V initial, V final, A, delta X, and T. We're given in this one zero, because it starts from this. It ends at this, so that's our final velocity, unit-wise. And 0.5 seconds is time, so 0 0.5 seconds here. These are the three variables we know. We need A in order to solve the problem. Okay, so in order to do that, we need to use our kinematics equations from this sheet. These are the three that we're given. I've already done this, so what I did was here, these are our three base equations. Okay, for this one, we want A, we don't have delta x, so I need to choose the equation that does not have delta x, which is this one. You will solve this equation for A. So to do that, we subtract VI. So you have VF minus VI equals AT. And then we divide by T. So the equation that we're going to use here is A is equal to VF minus VI over T. We can plug that in. 2.5 minus 0 over 0.5. Plug that in the calculator. It's going to give you 5 meters per second squared. Okay, You're going to need that to solve our problem. So on this one, we got a man pushes a block. There's friction pushing it back. So our free body diagram is going to be net force. FA goes this way. FFK goes this way. We're pretty much always going to have FN and FG. Our equation should be big force is FA minus FFK equals M times A. If I want M, I just divide by A. So divide by A, that cancels. Plug it in, we should get 350 minus 130 over 5. If you punch that in your calculator, you are going to get 44 kilograms. <clears throat> and I've got all the answers right here because I just recorded the whole video and apparently I didn't record. So that's why I'm going through fast this time. Sorry. Part B. If the man gets tired and the block begins to slow down at a rate of 1.4 meters per second squared, what is his new applied force? So the way that this works out is that now in this scenario, the only thing that's changed, our forces haven't, but the size of the forces have. we got FA to the right. FFK is now larger than it, and we know that because it's slowing down. So honestly, it's not that this got bigger. It's that this number got smaller. FA got smaller. When we write our equation now, the bigger force is FFK minus FA. That is the main change here. We want to solve for FA, so we're going to add that and then subtract that. So we're going to get FFK minus MA equals F times A. Plugging in, we should get 130. That's the same number from before. Minus our mass, we solved, is 44 times 1.4 kilograms. 1.4 meters per second squared. Plug that in, you should get about 68.4 newtons. Two, a 22 gram bullet. That means it has a mass of 0 0.022 kilograms. You've got to divide that by a thousand. It's going to fall through the air. What is the air resistance on the bullet? So essentially we have gravity pulls this bullet down. There's some air resistance making it, or drag, sorry, making it slow down. So if I wrote this equation, it's going to be Fg minus Fd equals M times A. We know what air resistance is. We're going to solve for Fd. Fd, sorry, Fd. Let's do it this way. Fg minus Ma equals F times D. OK. 
Okay, in order to answer this, I need to know what the acceleration is. So again, we're going to do kinematics. Our kinematics, we've got the initial is going to be zero. This problem should say it drops. Okay, it's a typo. It should say it drops it. It goes down 12.15 meters, and it does that in a time of 2.8 seconds. So again, we would use our equation that's missing VF, solve for A. Missing VF, solve it for A. What happens here? V initial times T is zero. So you get delta X equals one half AT squared. I multiply the two over to cancel it. I divide it by T squared. This is our equation. A is equal to two delta X over T squared. You plug in these numbers, you should get that the acceleration comes out to 3.1 meters per second squared. If we plug that into this equation here, we should have essentially 0 0.022 times 10, because this is m times g, minus 0 0.022 times 3.1, and it should come out to 0 0.152 Newtons. Number three, uh, stagecoach pulled by four horses, accelerating at this, from rest to this, in a distance of this, frictional force. So we've got applied force going this way, friction slowing it down, Fg, Fn. Equation is going to be Fa minus, so minus. FFK equals MA. If I want frictional force, I need to add it and subtract that. So FA minus MA equals FFK. I need A. To get A, I need to list my variables again. We've got V initial is zero because it's from rest. V final is 13.4 meters per second. A we don't know. Delta X is 120 meters. T we don't know. Equation wise, choose one that's missing T. That's this top one here. When we solve it, that zero, we divide by two and delta x, so we get acceleration is Vf squared over two delta x. If we plug in, we should get that it is roughly 0 0.75 meters per second squared. We can plug that into here. Okay. Pay attention. We've got 2,000 newtons of force for each horse, but there's four horses. So we're going to do two, or sorry, four times 2,000 minus 1,200 times 0.75. When you do that, you should get 7,100 newtons of force. Okay. For part B, horses get spooked, pull harder. Free body diagram doesn't change. Top equation doesn't change, but now we want force applied. So instead of FA minus FFK equals MA, we're just going to add this over. You get FA is equal to MA plus the force of friction kinetic. Now our V initial this time is 13.4. The horses were already going 13.4. They got spooked and ran faster, so their speed increased. Went up to 25, and it did this in 1.5 seconds. We want A. We don't have delta x. That means we use this equation here. It's going to work out to V final minus V initial over T. Acceleration comes out to 7.73 meters per second squared. We plug into this equation 12 100 times 7.73 minus, sorry, plus, force of friction was 7,100, comes out to 16,376 newtons. That's total. What it's asking for is by each horse, so we need to divide that by 4, and when we do that, we should come out to 4,094 newtons 
each. So that's per horse. Okay. Number four, we got a man stands in an elevator, got a mass of, we want to find the mass, so here, accelerates upwards, normal is larger than gravity. You want to solve this problem the same way we did this one here, where we're going to need to factor out those terms. Okay? So that's it for this video. Good luck.